Today we're looking at the logarithmic scale. Before we do that, we need to consider the linear scale. The linear scale is what we've been used to. When we plot points on a linear scale, every distance on that scale represents the same number. So whatever we're plotting, it's the same distance between each number and each distance represents the same number. That is our linear scale. With a logarithmic scale, we're talking about orders of magnitude. And in essence, what that means is that if we plotted a similar graph, each time you went up, you wouldn't go up by the same amount, you'd go up by an order of magnitude. And in this case, we're going up by powers of 10. And so on. So the order of magnitude for 10 is one, the order of magnitude for 100 is two, and the order of magnitude 10 of 1,000 is... Normally when we're talking about orders of magnitude, we're talking about powers, and we know them as uh, 10 is the power uh, to one, 10 to the power of two is 100, and 10 to the power of three is 1,000, because it's 10 times 10, times 10. Likewise, and this one, and this one, and uh, 0.1 and 0.2. That's how we more frequently see orders of magnitude. So why would we want to use a logarithmic scale? Well, especially in biology, things can happen pretty quickly. Let's consider the replication of bacteria, which can take place every 20 minutes, for example. We now know that's called binary fission from our unit in AS in year 12. However, let's consider how quickly that multiplies. You might start off with one bacterium. One bacterium after 20 minutes becomes two, becomes four, becomes eight, becomes 16, becomes 32. If one replication happens every 20 minutes, that's in the first hour and that's in two hours, you could plot that on a linear graph. Your axes wouldn't need to be that huge. But what about the following two hours? What happens then? quickly you've got a lot of bacteria and of course this isn't going to fit well on a linear graph it could do if you went up in thousands but some of the detail that you had early on would be lost and you wouldn't be able to recognize those small changes that were equally important early on as they are later on so very simply what does a logarithm mean well a logarithm of a number converts the number to the order of magnitude scale. So, what does that mean? Basically, it means that if we've got log 10, and we always use log 10 in biology, but if we've got log 10 of 100, it's gonna give us the number two. Well, we know that because 10 to the power of two is 100. And likewise, if we've got log 10 of 1,000, it's going to give us a log number of three. And again, we know that because that's 10 to the three. So what's so clever about using the log scale is it also gives us all the numbers in between. All the numbers in between 100 and 1,000, we can convert very simply to a number like this. Because it makes sense that 500 will have a log number of something between two and three. So, very simply, a logarithm with a base 10 tells us the exact number of times that 10 has been multiplied by itself to get that number. log to the base 10 of 100 is 2 and that's because that tells us that 10 was multiplied by itself twice to give us 100. 
so it figures that the following is true. And I can actually find the log of a number by using my calculator. And just to make sure I'm putting it in the calculator in the right order, what I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna to go to the shift button, I'm going to go to my log, and I'm going to put in there a thousand equals, it gives me the number three. So I know I can find my log of any number. Now let's clear that and let's have a little think. If I'm looking for the log number of 500, we're gonna expect that to be somewhere between two and three. So shift log 500 equals, it tells me that the log with a base 10 of 500 is equal to two, of course, if we're going to change that to three significant figures, we're going to move to this one, but this gets rounded up, so it's going to be 2.7. Okay, so let's go through some numbers and see how and where they sit. So again, I'm just looking at my log 10 of 100 is going to give me two. Why? Because 10 to the power of two is 100. So the next order of magnitude up would be three. So I'm gonna put that at the bottom of my scale. Of course, 10 times 10 times 10 is a uh, thousand. So that would be the order of magnitude three. However, we've got a lot of numbers in between 100 and 1,000. And also, not every number is an integer. Sometimes we've got 2.1, 2.2, and so on. So let's have a little look at where they would sit on the scale. I'm just gonna... Four, eight, 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 eight. Now the point I want to get to is this. Look at the difference between these numbers. Between 2 and 2.3, it's quite large. Between 2.3 and 4.8, it's less. So here we've got a difference of 30. Then we've got a difference of 18. Then we've got a difference of 12. Then we've got a difference of 10. Then we've got a difference of 8. Then we've got a difference of 6. Then we've got a difference there of six. Then we've got a difference of five and so on. And that has just brought us to a really important point. When this is plotted on a graph, you don't use graph paper like you would get in school where all the divisions are equal because they can't be. In logarithmic um, graphing, what you find is there's a special type of graph paper. And what happens is between one division and another division, we're gonna find that there are nine divisions because you're gonna go 200, 300, 400, 500, and so on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put those on and then what you're gonna find is that those divisions get smaller and smaller and smaller. So that they're not equal spaces, and that's because the numbers aren't equally distributed, as you might think. So if I want to find the log of 500, basically what I'm saying is how many times do I need to times 10 by itself to get to the number 500? I know it's going to be between 2 and 3, because if it was 3, I'd have a 1,000, and that's too high. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it into my calculator, and I'm going to say... Um, shift to the shift to the log of 500 equals and it actually gives me 2.7 likewise if I've already got my log number then I want to find out what the anti log is I want to work backwards so that time I'm going to put into my calculator it's a shift log and then I'm going to put in 3.5. I know my answer is going to be more than 1,000, but it's going to be less than 10,000. When I press equals, it gives me 3,162. So basically what I'm saying is I need to turn 10 by itself 3.5 times 
to get this number. So, just to be clear, if you're plotting orders of magnitude, i.e. 10 to the 1, 10 to the 2, 10 to the 3, you need to use logarithmic graph paper that looks like this. You can see that this graph paper has a logarithmic scale on the y-axis, but the x-axis is a linear scale because it's equally divided into 10 different parts. On the x-axis, it's a linear scale, and on the y-axis, it's a logarithmic scale. To use normal graph paper again, you're simply going to plot the logarithm, i.e. if you wanted to represent 100, you would plot 2, for 1,000, you would plot 3, for 10,000, you'd plot 4, and of course, all the numbers in between. So let's imagine we're looking at this question, and the question asks, what is the increase in the number of bacteria between the time 200 and 300 minutes. Well, clearly what we're going to do is we're going to draw a line up from 200 till it intercepts our line and we're going to take that across and we're going to take that reading and let's say that that is um, 4.2 and then we go from 300, we take that all the way up to there, we take it across and let's just say it's 5.5. Remember that this is the logarithmic scale. This is how many times we need to times 10 by itself to get a particular number. Now, if that was four, we would know that 10 times 10 is 100, 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000, 10 times 10 times 10 is 10,000. So we already know that our answer is gonna be above 10,000 for this. And then we're gonna be above 100,000 for this because we're going up in orders of magnitude. So let's just have a little look, put that in the calculator, and we're going to say um, 10 to the 4.2 equals 1,000, no, 15,849, and 10 to the 5.5, that's going to be 31,6228. If I now minus this figure from this figure, just looking at the difference between uh, 200 and 300 minutes, we've got 300,379 bacteria.